Hello lovely people, it's March and that means it's Women's History Month and to celebrate I decided to draw and highlight some of the most influential black female writers of our time. Now I could have drawn Toni Morrison and Maya Angelou but I feel like we all know and love them already. If you don't, please find yourself a library and treat yourself to some of the best writing of our time. I, however, have decided to highlight some of my favourite female authors that you may not have heard of or that you don't hear as much of. If you're new here, my name is Anar Bong and welcome to my channel. Here is the collection of the ink pens that I, I, may, I may use. I have this zebra pen, which is a brush pen, which I like because it you can vary the thickness and the tapering. Then I also have my two micron pens in two different sizes, and the 08 and the 01 size, and this collection of Ahuhu markers. Now, let's get on with my portraits. So the first person I'm drawing, you probably heard of, it's Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. She is a Nigerian novelist and writer, and she splits her time actually living between, I believe, the US and Nigeria. She's probably best known for her novel Americana, which follows a young Nigerian woman adapting to life and race relations in the US. Because guess what? In Nigeria, there are no race relations. There is no race problem. There are other problems. There are problems regarding um, the politics between the different tribes and the relationship with Britain and the West and colonialism and post-colonialism and all that business. But yeah, you're not discriminated against in Nigeria for being black. My personal favourite book by Chimamanda is Half of a Yellow Sun. It's set during the Nigerian Civil War and it focuses on a key family and their experiences during the war in the lead up to it, during and the aftermath. And you know, I do love Americana. Americana has some great insights and it is a great book and I would highly recommend reading it. But why I love Half the Yellow Sun is that it's completely separated from the white gaze. Americana is, it's a love story, if you call cheating a love story, spoiler alert. But it focuses a lot on um, how the main character is seen by white people in America as a black person as a Nigerian, as a foreigner, and that can be quite triggering <laughs> sometimes, especially for somebody who has lived in majority white spaces all her life. And it's it's a great book, I would definitely recommend reading it, but I prefer Half of a Yellow Sun because, yeah, it's set away from that. Her TED Talk, The Danger of the Single Story, is the most viewed TED Talk of all time, which you've likely heard because samples of that were featured in Beyonce's Flawless. This next wonderful female writer that I will be drawing is the British-born Andrea Levy, or Levy. I'm not quite sure which pronunciation is correct. She is best known for her novels Small Island and The Long Song. Now, her work focuses on British Jamaicans as they navigate race, culture and identity in Britain. Small Island is set in Britain during World War II and it follows the lives of two women, one white and the other black, and how they are affected by the conflict. Levy says that when she was writing the book she was struck by you know, the time period of the war and how it was this chasm in Western history and world history, but how Caribbean people and their stories are often left out from that history, and so she wanted to insert them back in. She says that she read her first book at 23 and was struck by the power of stories. When she got interested in books and went searching for books by black writers, she could find lots by American writers such as Toni Morrison and Maya Angelou, but not a lot by black British writers. and. So she set out to, to change that. Her two novels, Small Island and The Long Song, have both been adapted into BBC dramas, so you can watch them as well. And they've both won multiple awards. And The Long Song was actually shortlisted for the 2010 Man Booker Prize. Unfortunately, Levy lost her fight to breast cancer in 2019 but she left us with a fantastic catalogue of works to read 
and um, yeah, do yourself a favour and read Small Island. It may actually change your life. This third person is another British Caribbean writer. She is Mallory Blackman and her parents are from Barbados, of which Rihanna is now the head of state. Mallory Blackman writes science fiction, uh, novels and screenplays for children and young adults and she was actually named Great Britain's Children's Laureate from 2013 to 2015 in which time she created the UK's first young adult convention. Now if you are of my generation which is Millennials. I should say if you are of my if you are a British millennial, then you will know Mallory Blackman. She's up there with Jacqueline Wilson as in the people who formed our childhoods. She is probably most famous for her science fiction novel Noughts and Crosses, which is set in fictional Great Britain where black people are the ruling car are the ruling class and white people are subjugated and obviously it speaks on issues of race and class. It's a love story ultimately but also focuses on the and those disparities and how the different characters uh, deal with that. If you're in the US it was actually published as Black and White, the title Black and White because US publishers have no nuance, um, which I, you know I'm mad about. I'm mad, I'm mad that the US published Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone as Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone because the Philosopher's Stone is an actual object in Greek mythology, look it up. And I'm mad that they changed the title of Noughts and Crosses because Mallory Blackman said that the reason she called it Noughts and Crosses is because it's a game that when you play it outside of childhood, nobody wins. And the idea is that in this in issues of racism and class disparities and this holding the power and subjugating others, nobody wins. There's there's meaning behind those kind of titles and just calling it black and white, it's like, I feel like that speaks to race relations in the US, to be honest. This last person I'm going to draw, she is Jennifer Nancy Buga Makumbi. Jennifer Nancy Buga Makumbi is a Ugandan British novelist and writer. She was born and lives most of her life in Uganda and came to um, the UK for her doctoral studies in creative writing. Her doctoral novel, The Chintu Saga, won the Kwame Manuscript Project and was published by Kwani in 2014 as Chintu. Uh, Chintu is a mythical story telling the rise and fall of the Chintu clan alongside alongside the rise of modern Uganda and it is an epic. If you are a fan of mythologies and legends and you know any of the Greco-Roman mythologies or if you have had the pleasure of delving into the world of African mythologies which is my current obsession you will love Chintu. It's told through the modern lens, like many of the common retellings uh, popular right now, but it's, it's very African, which makes sense because her work is based in the oral traditions that are anchored in her Ganda culture. And you can tell by how Chintu reads and the storytelling. It's got magical realism, it's got mythology, it's got legend, it's got politics, it's got fantastic writing, it's got everything that you need. She also writes short stories and uh, she has a collection of short stories called Manchester Happened and she also has a book club in Manchester, an Africa African Readers book club which highlights obscure African novels that you know need to be highlighted. As well as that, she's actively working to expand the literary canon in Africa especially. Um, it's important that the, book, the, the books that Africans are reading are by Africans and speak of the African experience and aren't just, and aren't just the Western books that are popularised. And then her most recent novel is 
called The First Woman, or in America it's called A Girl is a Body of Water, and it tells, it's another origin mythology story that I highly recommend. And so those are the first four black female novelists and writers I chose to highlight for this Women's History Month 2024. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and goodbye.